All right, Shalom, Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, Ka Halal, Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Quidash, double honors to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Also, peace and blessings to my fellow yokesmen, the hopeful elect that continue in the work of our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai, also to the believers, the Akim Wa Akwathium that continue to believe upon the names Yahweh Wa Yahweh Shai, and all fear, Shalom. Lord willing, this lesson will be edifying. I'm going to jump right into it. The book of Sirach, chapter 2, and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. The scripture is telling us here in Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1. If you're sincerely serving Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai, prepare for those temptations which are fiery trials because they are going to come. That's if you are sincerely serving Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai. Your faith is going to be tested. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 7 that the trial of your faith being much more precious then of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So we want to be in that lot because we are going to get tried. All right. But the trial of your faith is way more precious than any possession that you can hold, such as gold and silver. And matter of fact, those that endure unto the end, those that are sincerely serving Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai, and that get tried and come through those trials is compared to silver and gold. That's why the scripture tells us in Isaiah 48 and 10, it says, Behold. Behold means see or look. I have refined thee. So these are the words of the Most High coming through his prophet Isaiah, and he is stating the claim, Behold, I have refined thee, and that's those that are compared to the silver and gold, which is the elect, but not with silver, meaning the Most High have chosen a way for him to refine you, but not as actual silver and gold, because actual silver and gold is sent through a what? Fiery furnace to be tried or to be tested. When you want to test anything, you put fire to it to see what it's made of. But the Most High is saying, I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. So that's why the scripture tells us in the book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 1, My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Because the Most High is going to try you. All right? Now, the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 it says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth so easily beseech us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us all right, meaning don't let anything get in your path. All right, be single-eyed. Keep your eyes on the prize, so to speak, which is a crown of life. All right, because things will get in your way. Okay, and look at Yahweh Shai. As the scripture tells us, looking unto Yahweh Shai, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. So when we're going through our episodes, when we get tempted, we must consider Yahweh Shai and know that he already have completed what we're going through right now. He have already been perfected and we want to be perfected. All right. But know that the temptations are going to come. The, tri the fiery trials are going to come to test you. But we must be in the mindset of Yahweh Shai. All right. We must be what? Looking forward and looking past the temptations, because by having knowledge, we must know that they're going to happen. But Yahweh Shai, uh, despising the shame. All right. He what? 
was set down at the right hand of the Most High because he looked towards the finish line. Verse 3, it says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, which is Yahweh Shai, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. So when you're going through your episode, consider Yahweh Shai and know that anything that we can go through is not compatible to what Yahweh Shai went through. Verse 4, Ye have not resisted unto blood, scribing against sin. See that? We have not resisted unto blood, scribing against the sins of the nation of Israel. But Yahweh Shai did when he hung himself upon the cross and took all of the, the, the beatings before he got hung upon the cross. See that? Verse 5, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Okay, you must be a son first. Be made a son. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. See that? Now, verse 6 tells us, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receives. So that's one way to know that you have been received, because you receive uh, the licks also, or you receive the scourges. All right, you receive the temptation. All right, the trials, the fiery trials to test your faith. Verse 7, it says, If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? See that? So, in order to know that you may have a chance for salvation, or you may be one of the sons, all right, that's been received, that chastening happens unto you, all right, on a great deal. Verse 8, But if ye be without chastening, but if things are always going your way, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. So all that uh, that's a part of Yahweh Shai's body that are joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, you're going to partake in that chastisement. But if you don't, then are ye bastards and not sons. See that? It says, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and live see that so we have fathers in the flesh or we had a father in the flesh that chastised us and we showed respect unto him so why not show respect unto the most high when he bring that that chastisement all right because he know the degree of heat to turn up, okay, upon you, all right? The, uh, the, the scripture says that the Most High will bring chastisement upon you, but he'll uh, make a way for you to get out of it. That's the mercy of the Most High. Verse 9, furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much more, much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Verse 10, for they verily for a few days chasten us after their own pleasure. A father of the flesh chastised you uh, because of what he wanted to do to you for his pleasure. But he for our profit, but the Most High is chastising us for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness, that we should be joint heirs. All right, with Yahweh Shai. Verse 11, now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous. All right. But grievous, nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby, meaning it's going to benefit us. All right. He's not chastising us for his benefit. It's for our benefit. All right. That we can what receive salvation in that day. All right. Let's jump from there. And let's get the book of Romans. chapter 8 and verse 17 let's start at verse 16 it says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of the most high verse 17 and if children then heirs heirs of the most high and joint heirs with Hamashiach if so be that we suffer with him that we might be also glorified together. So it says what? That we suffer with Hamashiach. 
that we be glorified together with Amashiach at his coming. Because what? Verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. All right, because the sufferings that we go through, regardless of what the Most High allow you to go through, is not compared to what Yahweh Shah went through. And it's going to yield peaceable fruit unto us. Why? Because at Yahweh Shah's coming, we shall be joint heirs with him if we partake in his sufferings. St. Matthew. Sixteen, and verse twenty-four. It says, "Then said Yahweh Shai unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Meaning, lay down your life, all of the dreams and aspirations that you had in this life, you must let them go. All right." And take upon your cross and follow Yahweh Shai, which is taken upon Yahweh Shai's suffering. Verse 25, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. So in order to save your life, you must lose this life, this worldly life. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake. All right. So lose your life for Yahweh Shai's sake shall find it. Now you have found real life which is in Yahweh Shah. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. See that? And that light is the life of men, or that life is the light of men, which is basically Yahweh Shah. All right, now, the book of First Peter, in the fourth chapter, speaks about us taking upon Yahweh Shah's sufferings. First Peter chapter four, and in verse 12, it says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Meaning, once you came into this truth, everything was right side up, so to speak. All of a sudden, everything got turned inside out, all right, and upside down in your life. So think it not strange that it happened unto you, because it says, Verse 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Hamashiach's sufferings. See that? That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. See that? So at the coming of Yahweh Shai, if we continue in the sufferings, continue to take upon our cross, we're going to be glad that we did so at Yahweh Shai's coming because we're going to receive what the rest of the world is not going to receive, salvation. While everybody in the world, including two-thirds of our people mainly, have received their constellation right now. Verse 14, it says, If ye be reproached for the name of Amashiach, happy are ye. All right? For the spirit of glory and of the Most High resteth upon you. On your part, he is evil spoken of, but... Salakia, on their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. And that's the uh, lot that we want to fall in. All right. Those that get reproached for Yahweh Shai's sake. All right. Meaning we are not of this world. St. Matthew 5 and verse 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So we are getting persecuted for righteousness sake. If you're getting persecuted for the ministry's sake or Yahweh Shai's name's sake. Verse 11. All right. And you shall be that what? True blessed one. Okay. Which is receiving uh, the riches of receiving a crown of life. Blessed are ye when men shall reveal you and persecute you, and that persecution is going to come by verbal persecution, all right? They're going to demonize us, and it's going to be physical persecution because they're going to try to kill the elect off and those that believe and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Yeah, they're going to demonize us and say we're terrorists, but that's okay. We want to be alienated from this world, okay? We don't want to be a part of this world because... You know, the things that we go through, 
people in the world also go through. But the people in the world, mainly two thirds of our people, are suffering to be destroyed if they're suffering. But we're suffering for what? Righteousness sake. First Peter five and verse nine, it says, whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So we'll, we go through the same thing the rest of the people of the world are going through. Because remember, Yahweh Shai said, I pray not you take them out of the world. Verse 10 tells us, but the power of our, of all grace, who have called us into his eternal glory by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, by the blood of Yahweh Shai, after that, ye have suffered a while, even though we're catching these afflictions, the same afflictions that are accomplished in the world, this is the difference between our afflictions and their afflictions. After that, ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthens, and settles you. All right? To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And that's due to the Most High allowing you to go through that purging process. All right? Because we want to be what? Acceptable men. We want to be those men that are accepted by Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. All right? And that's by Yahweh Shai coming and delivering us. We want to be found as those precious metals, all right? Those metals, when they go through their trials and tribulations and that furnace of affliction, they come out whole. The book of, back to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, and verse 2, it says, Set down heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. So when your temptation is taking place in your life, Cleave unto Yahweh Shai. All right? Don't be uh, uh, quick to give up. Lay all your cares upon Yahweh Shai. Keep the faith. All right? Because you're going to be increased at your last end. It says, verse 4, Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. All right? So this is the scriptures encouraging us throughout those times when the Most High is tempting you. All right? Which, that's not an easy thing because the Most High know uh, what level to turn your fire up to, and you don't. It says, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. So the scripture is telling us, whatsoever is brought upon us, take cheerfully, meaning take it upon the chin and continue in the work. It says, and be patient, learn how to suffer when thou art changed to a lower state. All right, and we are in a lower state. All right, but we have been risen up out of that dust within our captivity, which is America. Verse five, it says, for gold, and this is the point, for gold is tried in the fire. Remember, just like silver get tested, the most high have chosen the furnace of affliction for us, and we want to be a part of the silver and gold, for gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. So we want to be acceptable men, acceptable believers, when we get thrown into the furnace of adversity, because it's just meant to try your faith and to get the dross up off of you, to make you a, a, a perfect metal, all right? A perfect precious metal fit for you, how was all right? So the scripture speaks about you're going to get tried in this truth, all right? It's going to come if you're sincerely serving you, how will you, how So Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.